Lead Ferris is a terrorism expert. He's advised the Mitt Romney and Donald Trump presidential campaigns, and he joins us tonight. Well, Lead, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. So this raises the obvious question, how did this guy get here? And it turns out he came under something called the Diversity Visa Lottery that mm -hmm. allows about 50,000 people to come into this country every year. They're given green cards. They have no connection to the United States and no skills, uh, specific skills. Given that program, how can we vet for people like this? Tucker, no matter what we do, in this case, previous cases, hopefully not, but future cases, the big V is the issue, vetting. Yeah. We need to have a strategic policy on vetting. Unfortunately, over the past eight years, the previous administration did not want to do it. So right now we are in the beginning, the first step of trying to find ways to vet. But if you look at the problems, you have where they're coming from. We had a conversation about it uh, over the past four hours. And then how are they going to go through the borders through legal or illegal means? And once they're here, we heard he was a nice guy. But that has nothing to do with the vetting. No. We need to establish vetting, and that needs the administration and Congress at the same time working together. I'm almost 50 years old. I remember when things like this didn't happen in New York, ever. And now they seem to happen with some frequency. It seems obviously tied to immigration. Why is the country unwilling to have that conversation and to face that? Because there is something in that conversation that is still taboo, which is the ideology. Don't touch the ideology, says the mainstream media, academia. Unless we change politically and intellectually, we're not going to get anywhere. And my concern here... But how can a small group of people in charge of our country continue to lie to the rest of us and demand that the rest of us participate in their lies when everyone knows it's a lie? Look, the rest of us is getting increasingly conscious, first because of the debate, second because of social media. I mean, the world of social media is very different from the world of mainstream media. Yes. Younger generations are, dis I'm observing in them every day, they get it. The problem, they don't have the power, I mean, except elections, except voting, except expressing. Interesting. What do you think causes the unwillingness of the people in charge, our elites, our ruling class, whatever you want to call them, to just be honest about it? Not attack anyone, not be bigoted or unreasonable, but just note what is clearly going on. Why are they resistant to that? Probably two reasons, historically. One is the fact that they don't know. Those who are advising them, I mean, I'm going to be very honest here, it comes from the classroom. It yes. comes from actually campuses. Social scientists have been telling us and telling many generations that you do not address this because this is the wrong argument. So we need to have a change, a reform in academia and how we teach the Middle East and how we teach... Uh, so they're basically making a religious argument. You shouldn't talk about this because it's naughty and immoral. That is from one perspective. The other perspective is interest. Uh, some elites have been convinced that if you start addressing the ideology, the Arab and Muslim world is going to be furious. Guess what? The Arab and Muslim world is changing. If you listen to what the uh, Egyptians and UAE and even the Saudis recently and others are saying, of course you need to talk about the ideology. They are saying that and we're still behind. So you're saying that the Saudis are freer about talking about Muslim extremism than, say, the Hillary Clinton campaign? I don't want to name political parties now, but I want to say that the elites, at least in the Arab and Muslim world, from many countries, are now more aware than our elites when dealing with it. Academia and politics and media, unfortunately. They're more advanced than us. On this that is a profound indictment of our ruling class, I would say. That's depressing. Thank you for joining us, Waleed Ferris. Thank you.